Sisters and brothers, the governor recently presented his 2017 state budget to the legislature. He laid out a series of policies that are a call to action for all of us. His plan looked a lot like last year's that cut vital public services, laid off hardworking public employees, and are again based on austerity policies that threaten our state's quality of life. Many of you have reached out to me over the past few weeks to ask questions, to express your frustration, or to find out how to get more involved in your union. Our initial analysis of the governor's proposal is on our website, but the governor's call for a billion and a half dollars in savings over the next two years from state employee union members has by far generated the most feedback. And there's been quite a bit of confusion created by lawmakers in the press referring to negotiations between CBAC union leaders and the governor's administration. These are the facts. For the past two years, there have been active negotiations for contracts with all but two of the 36 individual bargaining units. These contracts cover wages and working conditions for each of the locals. But there have been no negotiations, only exploratory discussions, over the agreement that covers health care and retirement benefits for all unionized state employees. That agreement was extended by CBAC 2011 until July 1, 2022. Obviously, it's unreasonable to ask any one group of Connecticut residents to bear the majority of the sacrifice. Public employee union members have stepped up twice in the past eight years to produce a significant savings. So why even have exploratory conversations? Because it might be possible to secure long-term stability and pension and health care for union members and their families by providing the requested savings in this budget. Such an agreement is worth exploring, especially in an environment in which a number of anti-collective bargaining bills have already been introduced by legislators. If passed, these bills would not only affect state workers, but potentially teachers, paraeducators, and other school personnel as well. For example, on February 21st, there's a public hearing on the proposed anti-collective bargaining bill. This legislation would roll back public employees' rights to negotiate pensions, stealing our families' retirement security, and silencing our voices at the negotiating table. We can look to states throughout the country to see the harm bills like these do to working families, and their communities. We cannot let this happen here. The way forward is to be all in as union members. There will be numerous opportunities to make sure that the governor and lawmakers hear from you before any state budget is finalized. Be sure to watch for our action alert messages and ways to participate in our grassroots legislative program. As I already mentioned, we need members to turn out at the Legislative Office Building in Hartford on February 21st for the first public hearing on the proposed anti-collective bargaining bill. Another of our annual legislative conferences on February 25th, also at the Legislative Office Building in Hartford. This is an opportunity to tell us the issues that are important to you. And we've invited elected leaders to come here firsthand from teachers, school support staff, nurses and healthcare professionals, higher education faculty, state employees and retirees. We need your voices to be included. And be sure to sign up for one of the seven one-on-one -on -one breakfast meetings with legislators taking place in local communities across the state on Saturdays in March and April. Working people today are facing the biggest challenges of my lifetime. From the broad attacks on labor rights in the federal level, to anti-union bills in our state legislation, to the budget crunch faced by educators and healthcare workers, our ability to fight for middle-class lives is being threatened. If we remain passive, if we do not strongly and collectively fight for our values, then the benefits we take for granted today could be gone. Not every step forward will be easy, but we must walk together. Make sure that your local officers understand your concerns and issues. Reach out to me and the leaders and staff at AFT Connecticut. But more importantly, ask yourself, what is your way of life worth to you? What are you willing to do to protect it? What sacrifices are you willing to make? show up at the hearings, attend our conferences, and participate in our legislative breakfast. These are important first steps. Get involved. And as always, I thank you for your commitment to your profession and to your community.